Hello everyone, um, my name is Nicolás Franco from the Product Marketing Team. Welcome to the Teaching and Learning Roadmap Series. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, before we get started, I wanted to go through some housekeeping items. Um, well, first, well, participants are muted by default. Uh, this is as a courtesy for, for, uh, with the speakers. Uh, we wanted to make sure we avoid any accidental background noises. Um, if you want to turn off the sound of each pop-up notification, please open the Collaborate panel on the bottom right corner of your screen. So click on the gear icon, select the notification settings, and then check the box for audio notifications. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback during the session, please type them into the chat and one of our fellow Blackboarders will do their best to answer. Uh, anyways, we're going to give you a link to the Q&A discussion board in the in the in Blackboard community for, for the roadmap sessions. And finally, the webinar will be recorded, sent out in email, and posted in the community site. So with that being said, I'm going to pass the mic to Nico. Nico, good morning. How are you? Awesome. Thanks very much, Nico. Doing well. Um, hey, good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everyone. I'm super excited that you're all uh, joining us for today's roadmap webinar because we have a lot to go through together. Now, before um, before we dive into the what I think is the exciting part of a roadmap, kind of the features and capabilities, we did want to start off with just a really quick recap on the different deployment models that currently exist for, uh, for Blackboard Learn. And as most of you will know, uh, there's currently three deployment models that are available. There is self-hosted, where you host Learn yourself. There is manage hosted, kind of using Blackboard's data centers. And then there is SaaS as well, where Learn is hosted in the cloud using uh, Amazon Web Services. And as you probably, as most of you will probably know, we are currently kind of on a transition to becoming fully SaaS-based, fully um, cloud-based. Now, roughly nine or 10 months ago, we, um, we made some important announcements around kind of self-hosted and managed hosted deployment. So I wanted to reiterate uh, some of that very quickly. So the first announcement that we made is that for, uh, is around self-hosted clients, and we continue to be committed uh, to providing full support for self-hosted uh, until the end of 2023. And we understand that there may be regulatory reasons that prevent uh, certain clients from making the move to SaaS. And we are, again, we are committed to working together to find uh, solutions for this. Now, uh, we also announced that uh, managed hosting will be supported until the end of 2022, the end of uh, next year, and that continues to be, uh, that continues to be the case. Um, so if you have any questions about this, I would encourage you to get in touch and, and kind of have a conversation with your, uh, with your representative. Now, in terms of that transition to SaaS, um, we're actually making some really good, making some really good progress here. I just wanted to share a few numbers around this. We currently have, uh, Sixty-five percent of our customers uh, on SaaS today, um, and we expect to be at at least eighty percent by the end of the year. So, in terms of the timelines that were uh, that were kind of uh, shown in the previous slide, we are on track, if not actually slightly ahead of plan, for kind of moving all of our clients um, to the cloud within that within that timeline. Now, being on SaaS uh, gives you access to kind of all of the latest features, the latest functionality, things like base navigation, Blackboard data, Blackboard assist, chatbot, as well as other things like zero downtime upgrades. Um, and in terms, of, uh, in terms of the base navigation, which for those of you not aware is, is kind of the more modern version of the, the main application uh, navigation, uh, we have actually just crossed a really important milestone there that I wanted to share. And that milestone is that we now have more than 50% of our customers that are on SaaS, actually 52% as of today, um, using the uh, using the, the base navigation, that new navigation. And for everyone uh, that hasn't actually made a move yet uh, to the base navigation, we would encourage you to really start thinking about this uh, because we do see for institutions that adopt the base navigation, we see that directly reflected in kind of their end user satisfaction uh, increasing. All right, so moving on from deployment models, wanted to take a, just a few minutes to talk about uh, the different course experiences uh, that are available. And as, as most, if not all of you will know, there are, there are two different uh, course experiences currently. There is the original uh, course view, which has been around for 
a very long time. And then there is the ultra course view, which is our newer, more modern uh, course experience. And first I wanted to zoom in a little bit on the original course view because we have noticed that there's a little bit of confusion out there regarding the original course view. So we wanted to be very clear about the few things. So first of all, just want to be clear that the original course view is available on SAS. So for self-hosted, managed hosted um, kind of institutions, it is possible for you to have pretty much the same experience as what you're having today on SAS, just with the addition of uh, some of those additional capabilities that I was that I was talking about. Second thing I wanted to be very clear about is that we are continuing to make investments in the original course view, and Dom uh, Dom will be going into more detail uh, around this. And the third thing that I wanted to be very clear about is that the original course view will be available beyond 2023. So the timelines that were communicated around self-hosted, managed hosted, they are not connected to the original course view in any way. And we, we definitely want to give everyone plenty of time to make uh, to make the move to the ultra course view um, as, as is appropriate to, uh, to them. All right, so in terms of the ultra course view, again, we will obviously be talking a lot about this in, 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 our, in our roadmap session today, but I did want to share one exciting milestone here as well, is that we now have 152 uh, customers that are fully on the ultra course view, and that is, uh, that is essentially 100% on, uh, on the ultra course view. All right, so um, shifting into uh, product roadmap a little bit more, um, I wanted to transition to something that we've actually been spending a lot of time on um, and that we'll, you'll increasingly see us talk about going forward as well. And that is really our, our Learn Ultra product vision and product direction, really about kind of where do we want to go in the next three to five years? What are some of the areas that we really want to focus on, that we really want to be, uh, that we want to be really good at? And what are some of the things that we are not going to do? Because I'm, I'm a strong believer that the VLE or the LMS can't be everything and anything to, to everyone. So over the last several months, we've been talking to a lot of institutions, a lot of students, a lot of academics, really get their thoughts on how the pandemic has been, what some of the more permanent changes are that we expect to come out of that. And through, those, through a lot of those conversations, that has really allowed us to kind of refine and sharpen our our product vision, our product direction, and that has resulted into these five, what we call uh, core product pillars. And I'll do a very quick run through of those. So at the center of these pillars, we've got the, uh, what we call the central pedagogy pillar. And this is the kind of the, the mix of actionable and personalized insights informed by rich data, blended with deep research informed pedagogical understanding and community best practice. And this central pedagogy pillar is surrounded by four additional pillars, uh, the first one being efficiency, the idea that um, the VLE needs to be built around instructors and students' natural workflow and has to become quicker and more valuable over time. The, the second uh, pillar uh, being best-in-class. This is all around seamless integration with and encouraging the use of best-in-class tools and resources and connecting with in-person and institutional resources where possible. Uh, third one is around progress, the idea of, of kind of showing instructors, learners where they're at, how they're doing, what to do next, and then helping them and identifying their next steps and then supporting them in taking those next steps. And then the last pillar is what we call the collective pillar, the idea of creating a shared experience, helping students and instructors build relationships, create ongoing feedback loops, provide mutual support, and create more authentic connections. Um, and so, so the reason why this is really important is because this is actually something that we're using as, as an internal working tool, almost as our internal compass to really help us in making, um, making prioritization decisions from a roadmap perspective and, and kind of in practical terms, what that means is that if, as we look at the, the very large list of things that we could be doing, we really try to look for things that for features capabilities that have overlap with with most, if not all of these, uh, all of these pillars. So um, I, I just wanted to take one minute to, to at least introduce this. Uh, there's a lot more to come on this. There's a lot more detail. We'll talk a lot about this uh, at BB World, for example, uh, including some of the exciting features and capabilities that this starts to translate to. But I am hoping that as we go through the more detailed roadmap today, that you'll actually start to see these pillars and these themes come back, uh, come back pretty strongly. 
All right. So the the last thing that I wanted to talk about is is kind of really how do we how do roadmaps work and how do we determine roadmap um, for the VLE for the LMS and roadmaps are essentially they're very complex and very fascinating exercises. They're constantly evolving, and there's essentially lots of different sources of input that feed into that feed into the to a roadmap. Things like UX activities, uh, generative research, conceptual validation, usability testing. Uh, feedback, user groups, uh, market research, usage data, and so on and so on. And there's there's all of these different um, there's all of these different sources of input that feed into the roadmap. And what's really important that the things that end up going into the funnel have to be aligned with the product vision, product direction, and that then ultimately leads to a prioritized list, which is uh, really a big part of what we'll run through uh, today. Second part that I wanted to uh, talk about in terms of how roadmaps works is, is kind of how they how we think about them and, and how certainty and confidence around the roadmap starts to starts to reduce the further you try to look out. And this is this is really important to understand because we do want to we want to set very realistic expectations in our um, in our roadmap. So the way we think about it is, is that there's there's kind of three different time horizons within a roadmap. First one is kind of at the one to three months uh, time horizon. And within this, we've got, an we've got a very high level of confidence of what's going to happen. Most of the features and capabilities will be um, kind of in, in advanced stages of development or maybe in testing already. So we'll have very high confidence on when exactly um, some of these kind of these features within this time horizon will be released. Second time horizon is, is the three to six months out. And this, we still have a fairly high level of uh, fairly high level of confidence. Most of these will be in progress already. We've got a good idea of what the features, the capabilities will look like. We may not always know the exact release date yet, and things can still change uh, based on feedback that we collect, based on what happens in the market, um, and so on. But we've got a, a pretty a, a pretty good idea and a pretty good level of confidence. And then once we start to look more than six months out, that's where things become a little more murky, uh, I guess, and, and we will have a good idea of what are some of the themes, the areas of functionality that we want to prioritize. We may not always know kind of the exact features that that may translate to. We won't have confirmed timelines at that point. And things will change, will evolve based on based on research, based on feedback, uh, and so on. So this, this, this is kind of, uh, we think this is quite important. And the structure of the roadmap that Don will be running through will reflect this as well. So we'll we're actually we're going to go through two different sections. First one on the original course view, second one on the ultra course view. And within each of those, we'll have essentially five different chapters or five different sections. The first one will be, okay, what are some of the, the highlights in terms of what's recently been released, what's recently been made available? Just to make sure that everyone has awareness, we won't run through everything that's been released recently, but we do want to share some of those highlights. Second section will then be, are there any recent changes that are worth calling out compared to the previous roadmap? Because we do want to make you aware of any changes that have happened. The third section is then this, this first time horizon. Okay, what's next? What's coming in the next one to three months? We will provide release dates for those. Um, we, we ask you to hold us accountable for those as well. And then the, the fourth section is, is this kind of second time horizon, the three to six months out. What are some of the highlights in there? We won't have time to cover everything, but you'll have a pretty good idea of, of what's coming next. And then the, the last section will be that six plus months um, time horizon where we'll go through some highlights. Again, we won't be able to cover everything, uh, but that's kind of the rough structure that we'll be, that we'll be going through today. So with that, um, I'll hand it over to Dom and he'll start off with the, uh, the roadmap updates for the original course view. Over to you, Dom. Perfect. Thanks ever so much indeed, Nico. Thanks ever so much, everyone. Great to see so many uh, friendly faces here. Um, yeah, Dom Gore, I'm part of our uh, Learn product management team. And uh, as, as Nico said, I want to kick things off, first of all, with original and kind of focus on sort of three key focus areas. So we're going to be looking at features to improve workflows for users, a focus around accessibility and then global applicability through localization. So what I want to go first of all through into is a bit of a, a quick demo demonstration, certainly of the kind of the LTI embed workflow for the content editor. So as we kind of starting to build uh, sort of the courses, we understand that 
you know, it's really important to kind of understand to use a variety of different solutions, especially as institutions have a variety of different uh, capabilities in their educational ecosystem. And one of the things that was previously available as part of the existing or the previous uh, Learn Original Rich Text Editor was kind of the workflows around the building block mashups framework. Now, as obviously as solutions have moved to kind of newer frameworks, new integrations, and obviously the work streams we've done around the new rich text editor, uh, the alignment around kind of the LTI standards and keeping alignment between original and ultra is something that we've, we've kind of uh, seen as a critical component. So one of the things we've actually done here, as you can see, is we've actually pulled these kind of capabilities into this add content menu. So for academics, you have the ability now through that LTI standard to access things like deep linking tools and course content tools. So an administrator can select those specifically for uh, an academic to access. That also goes the same thing for students as well. So students will gain access to uh, deep linking tools only as an administrator. They've been selected as kind of student accessible. So in this instance, you know, what I'll choose is this kind of Panopto video that you can see here. So this is kind of using that deep linking integration via LTI. You can see here we have this botany video selected. I can simply select, select that workflow, click insert, and that will directly embed that directly inside the editor. So we've really improved that LTI embed workflow directly inside that content editor workflow as you've seen. Okay, so jumping back into the roadmap and uh, going ahead and sharing those particular slides again just to make sure that we've got everything working and set up, I want to go back into this one here. So alongside some of the recent improvements that we've done around the editor, we've also updated some significant improvements. There's kind of five elements that you can see there that we've brought forward as part of these recent improvements. Um, and alongside that for original, we've also made a significant focus around Blackboard Assist. So for those of you that don't know what Blackboard Assist is this is a solution available for the original uh, learn original learn ultra and also as part of our blackboard mobile apps for students as well uh, this allows you to augment and promote institutional services to students it allows you to focus around different feature services at different times of the years and it also has optional integrated partners as well to kind of help and engage with students over sort of a 24 hour 24 7 uh, period of time Continue on the topic of sort of recent improvements for original. The first area that we've done as well is around notifications in the uh, user interface. Some of them were localized, but we do know that some weren't, and that always didn't always align specifically to kind of end users' exp uh, expectations. Some of them were delivered in the system's default, default locale. So what we've actually done is improve both email and SMS notifications to allow them to be aligned to the user's preferred language as opposed to the system default. So you'll see here this is both available for the original experience and Ultra as well, but again, really focusing on that level of recent improvements. Continue on the topic of improvements specifically for admins now. We know that course archives to supporting transferring of course archives to offline storage is something that's part of continual course lifecycle workflows and part of the annual cycle that, so that is important for institutions to do. So what we've actually done is allow SAS uh, admins to kind of bulk download those archives as well, allowing validation and deleting workflows as well to take uh, sort of a, a precedent around kind of clearing up that storage. So this is something that we've really significantly focused on as part of our admin update. And also mobile. So one of the things that we've done around the sort of our mobile apps, that's both for the Blackboard app and the Blackboard Instructor app, is provide that capability to support messaging. So this is available for both original and ultra, um, supports push notifications as well as new uh, newness indication for new messages that come in, uh, includes full rich text editor and media support, and also provides the flexibility that you would have from a mobile device like pull to refresh as well. So some significant improvements there that we brought forward. So again, to uh, what Nicholas was saying around kind of that one to three, three to six uh, sort of time frame. Moving on to sort of improvements in the one to three month area. One of the things we're actually really clearly focusing on is around that inclusive language improvement. So we're making significant improvements in original around things like alter, altering, um, altering references to things like master courses, blacklist, whitelist, really focusing heavily on that inclusive workflow as well. Accessibility, critical one around things like the grade center, for example, improving headers, table structures, uh, clarifying button roles and improving ARIA labeling, and obviously supporting things like date pick and navigation clarification for users as well. So really focusing on that accessibility component. 
And then again, from a, uh, a sort of a languages perspective, we're really expanding that workflow. And you can see this is also available for Ultra. So we've always supported Portuguese, uh, sort of Brazilian Portuguese. We're also going to be supporting Iberian Portuguese as well as Canadian French um, uh, in, in uh, both the experiences that we have. Again, continue on the topic of one to three months. Uh, first of all, kind of an end user experience update, one of the things around session timeout, just improving that end user experience to users as in when and if they've actually logged out of the solution, again, available for Ultra as well. Talking around Blackboard Assist, one of the things that we've seen pretty significantly is the need to allow students who are potentially doing research projects or group projects to have access to uh, the Ally file transformer, so the ability for them to improve the accessibility score, download alternative formats, and we're actually bringing this capability into our Blackboard Assist solution as well. And then uh, finally, kind of SAS has always had the benefits of automatic backups, uh, but obviously what we've seen is that some environments do end up taking more space than expected, and we have seen this. So actually what we're doing is uh, improving some of the compression workflows and storage management of this feature, again, to really support that overall storage component. Now moving into sort of the work in progress in sort of a three to six month time frame. A couple of updates specifically to the rich text editor, which I demoed to, to you previously. Uh, first of all, consistency essentially between authoring and viewing. That was a key component and one of the things we're going to be continuing to do. When we released the updated rich text editor in November of last year, one of the things that we did provide at that point of, of delivery was the ability to support copy and paste of images directly inside the, uh, the rich text editor. Now, we do know that after we did that, we did experience some performance problems and we did have to revert back to previous, uh, v previous capabilities. What we do want to do though, when we're working towards is seeking to get back to that functionality because then we know it was a heavily requested piece of uh, functionality from the community. Uh, we want to uh, improve the grading workflow. So essentially disrupted grading activities can reset the you know, sort of academic engagements uh, and obviously when they're kind of in that, uh, in that grading workflow. So we definitely want to improve that workflow uh, to essentially uh, to, to reduce kind of any poor grading experience. And then finally, and again, something we bring into Ultra as well, uh, we've had a significant amount of feedback again around sort of administrators better supporting management of storage in their environment. Uh, and so what we're doing is actually an initial project around setting a maximum file upload on the system. So users will be warned um, in the workflow that they cannot upload a particular file, uh, upload a sort of significant file, um, and optionally directed to use different file storages. So for example, in this instance, it could be a video. If it's too big, and that's obviously above the, the limit the admin has set, we would recommend that you use something like a, a video storage solution for that capability. So some key improvements that we've got coming for original in the three to six time, the three to six month time frame. Okay, so shifting gears, what I want to do first of all is uh, jump into the ultra course view, but actually what I want to do is share a, uh, a particular, something that's pretty impressive to be honest and put together by our, uh, our uh, actual um, uh, institutions that we've been working with and uh, really wanted to kind of show this. This is the ultra course wrap. Professor Lyricale. Oh, we about to break it down. Break yeah. it down. Ultra. You want to require your all that knowledge? Take this wisdom like pearl so y'all can aspire and accomplish then go take on the world. Now, we ready to break it down on some ultra bass nav, simple symbols and some icons that you might not ever had. Plus is the ad like math, a similar concept. Whenever you click in on it's because you want to be animal content or common all over the web or wherever you want to roam. For example, announcements, check out the megaphone. Maybe you never phone home and like to text instead. Look for the icon with script for the text you get from the professors and yes and some are better of course well you can check the star for your favorite course of course pencil is editor so I definitely wanted to share that. Um, amazing what our, our uh, sort of community of users can do. Um, yeah, it's definitely something that uh, that kind of blew me away and blew people away in the uh, in the in the product management team. And again, this is actually put together by uh, University of the District of Columbia. So absolutely amazing. Um, definitely recommend uh, have a looking at that uh, that full video. Um, uh, it's available on YouTube, and we can drop the link into the chat. But absolutely brilliant and uh, really uh, really cool piece. 
of uh, a, a cool video that was put together. So, okay, so on the topic of the roadmap moving forward, um, definitely wanted to talk a little bit about sort of our recently released features and improvements. And we've kind of done this uh, on a number of the roadmaps that we've we've kind of pushed forward on. So sort of first of all, um, a kind of HTML authoring in documents. So last time, last time we sort of spoke together, we did speak around kind of HTML in Ultra and how we deliver this into Ultra documents and essentially how anticipated this was. Obviously, HTML is super powerful, um, allows sort of uh, academics to elevate content and overall course design. But one of the things that we did as we kind of build this, this function in was really think about how data security was a key component when it comes to HTML creation. So what we did was we, we used a new type of uh, technology to support that data security, but we did know there was a slight ripple effect on some customers um, as we kind of rolled this capability out. We kind of feel that we're on the other side of that now and really look forward to kind of being able to uh, allow you to go ahead and use this capability directly inside, inside Ultra. Next up, qualitative peer review, a huge one, and uh, I'm really excited about delivering this to our customers. You know, peer assessment's a great way to engage learners, assess critical thinking and appraisal and communication skills. Um, we've made peer review super easy. You know, we've built this into the existing workflow for ultra assessment, so it's just an opportunity for you to enable and have access to it. Um, we've actually set this part of the assignment workflow for students as well, so they can actually see, um, you know, when they have submissions to engage on. On. And we obviously, from an, an academic's perspective, evaluation completion dates and number of required reviews can also be selected. But what's crucial about this is that uh, this was actually created from the ground up with feedback directly from you. A huge amount of, uh, of feedback in, uh, from our client community about how we should develop and, and support this solution. And it was really important that we kind of got that right from the get go. A couple of other things as well. With this, in, with this particular solution, we're actually allowing late participants and, ha and, and actually can handle lateness as it's flagged for individual graders. This is unique and something that our actual our competitors don't have. Our competitor solutions don't allow late submitters or evaluators are actually locked out of the overall process. And if you think about that, that doesn't actually work in the real world. So having this capability and really bringing it um, based on your feedback was a critical component for us. So uh, really excited about bringing this to, uh, to our community. Next up, conditional release by users and groups. Um, this is a, something that's really, you know, again, heavily requested for our com community. We've made, you know, kind of regular engagements um, around this over the sort of the last couple of years in terms of uh, group workspace improvements, you know, from the early days of allowing kind of group capability creation, but now right up to the ability to kind of segment courses by users and groups. So with that, again, I want to jump into a, a quick demonstration of this capability just to sort of show you what some of these workflows look like. So jumping into my environment, and I'll just give it a minute so the application can share effectively. Uh, before I even jump in, the first thing actually you'll notice from the base navigation here is this little uh, kind of red icon that you can see here. Another small but pretty mighty improvement, and again massively uh, pushed from the community, is new message on the base navigation. So here we have that capability, now it's been delivered. Um, you know, what you can see when I select this workflow, you'll see the indicator sl changes slightly, it still gives me that indication that I'm on that page, but doesn't necessarily draw my eye directly to it. Um, in this instance here, I can click on, you know, I've got a particular unread message in this instance. I can see that Isabel has sent me one. I can choose to do that. And we can come off that particular message there. And if I move to a different view, you'll see that the message count is updated. So this is, again, heavily requested by our community. But again, I wanted to kind of quickly show that just as we were kind of going into this workflow. Uh, now, back to the sort of uh, release conditions for uh, users and groups. Again, heavily requested, super um, excited about delivering this. So in terms of this ultra course here, I'll click on visible to students and click on the release conditions. And you'll see this peak panel that gets displayed it just has the kind of the other release conditions have been available. You'll notice all members are automatically selected. But here, if I select this option, I now have the opportunity to release specific content items directly to either an individual user or set of users. And I can simply search for them or select that user on the, on the, on the drop down or individual groups as well. So if, as an academic, if I've already created the set of course level groups that I want to go ahead and align this to, I can go ahead and do that as well. 
But finally, you know, very similar to how we've done things uh, with assessments and discussions, you know, you have the ability as well, not only to pre-create as an academic, those particular course level groups, but if you haven't done that in that flow, you actually have that workflow available from this page as well. A small, but again, pretty significant user experience update that really provides that alignment. And then finally, I can actually align users and groups delivery for conditional release actually with other release conditions as well. So if I wanted to release this to a particular group, but only on a certain date, or that group had to get a certain performance related to a gradable um, assignment that's inside the system, I can actually choose multiple conditions directly with that workflow as well. So again, lots of flexibility in that capability in the, in the, in the workflows that we brought in for release conditions, but again, super excited about uh, being able to deliver this to our, our, um, our customers. Okay, so I'm going to jump back into the roadmap and uh, kick off where we left off on the uh, on the slides. Okay, so next up, rich text editor improvements. So we do know that HTML is super powerful, um, but not everybody has the sort of the skills necessary to go after and obviously create that, that level of workflow. So it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we provide the best possible experience for the academics and the users that we have access to. So what we've done is actually expand a whole host of different things in the rich text editor in, in Ultra. So giving options like uh, WCAG 2.1AA um, compliant colors, assortments of new fonts, uh, sizes as well, better format controls to allow sort of academics to create more engaging pages. Um, but also we're not done. You know, that was a first up update as well. We've got a whole host uh, in more in active development. I'm actually going to touch on them as well. A, a key one around table capability as well. So following on from tables, and we'll talk about that later, um, we'll also be allowing things like blocks of code capability into the text editor. So allowing that to have sort of being able to execute directly. Uh, finally, new visual communications have been amplified. So we do know that people want to use more than just the written word to express engagement. So actually what we're going to be doing is working with things like emojis and obviously having that visual cues to really support that sharing and that intent of the message being portrayed. So with the addition of emojis, social constructivism and collaborative online activities can become really engaging and can really support those engagements between peers and academics. New base navigation. So again, great feedback from our early adopters around this one. You know, our early adopters really wished for a way to be able to grade with the rubric and work through paper at the same time. So what we were able to do is kind of create a new tab navigation component. And what we actually did alongside that is we quickly followed up with uh, the option to reduce the description. So you have the ability to maximize the screen real estate when as an academic you're grading the papers that have been submitted by your students. Um, and also we're going to be, uh, we're actually in working on it right now in active development around the ability to collapse the right pane and introduce independent scrolling options for both the right pane and the main pane so that actually academics can uh, sort of manage and obviously have uh, exactly the page as they're grading online because um, that's a critical component now exactly how they would they want it so lots of improvement in that area again specifically around the grading component and finally this is interesting have you ever really had the time when you get an odd error that you've never seen before uh, you kind of go into it you dutifully call the support line whether it's in your institution and they you understand that actually you can't it doesn't happen again or you can't you can't um, replicate that issue happens to me all the time um, and you know one of the things that we wanted to really improve on is kind of how learn has that diagnostic checks to really support that workflow so it's actually what we've done we've actually built in the capability to allow both academics and students the opportunity to do session debug control so that what they can do is they can pause if there is something that is sort of acting incorrect um, or just, just doesn't look correct, you know, um, uh, is even working as, as expected in the environment. They can grab the code and they can send that to their learn administrator. So what that can do is the learn admin can then take a look at that code and then essentially see the last 30 clicks the user did. So they can essentially look to try and troubleshoot it either internally as part of the support workflow that you have as the institution or essentially roll it up to Blackboard support for further investigation. So again, really supporting that kind of end user workflow um, just to kind of troubleshoot those, those niggling issues that don't always occur when you want them to. Okay, so moving on to a transition around some things that have and are, uh, will be kind of changing over the course of the next few months. 
So some of them, some of you may be aware of uh, a bulletin that I sort of pushed, we pushed out a couple of weeks ago and also a community post that I, that I pushed forward. So Blackboard has been informed that the existing cloud storage provider uh, that we use in both Learn Original and Ultra is going to be going away. And because we understand how critically important it is inside the VLE that you have access to cloud storage providers, you know, we are work actively working on a replacement solution now for this. So this new solution will provide all all of the existing capabilities that you use currently, so access to Microsoft OneDrive, OneDrive for Business, Google Drive Box, uh, and Dropbox as well. We're looking to support backwards compatibility, which is a critical component of this. So basically what that means is that we are trying to reduce any need for upgrades across our deployment types, not just for SaaS, but also for self-hosted and managed hosted customers as well. One of the unique things about this new replacement solution is that it's actually open source. So we have full control over the code. We have the capabilities to add additional enhanced features as well to this, this particular um, uh, feature, this capability. And we will be building in with this new solution a much more granular level of permission control because again, on the previous solution that we had, we do know there was some issues with clients who had concerns with granting higher level permissions to access personal and institutional accounts this capability will provide that granular permission as well. And just to note that any of you who are utilizing the current solution, anything that you've previously uploaded into, into Blackboard Learn, that won't be affected by this transition as we push forward. Okay, so changing gear slightly, and again, going into that sort of next up feature improvements over the next one to three months. First of up, the uh, proctoring framework. So Blackboard has, we've been, we've long promoted this, you know, sort of open standards as a basis for third party developers, you know, our clients and our partners to customize and extend the EdTech platform. As we continue to evolve Learn Ultra in supporting deeper and more seamless integrations as part of our best in class pillar that Nicholas is talking about, we're really pleased to announce a recent enhancement around our proctoring or something that we're classing as our digital examinations framework. This framework is built on top of the very latest L IMS LTI proctoring standard, which was defined and actually created itself by both proctoring and wider assessment organizations. And actually we're really proud to be the first VLE provider to be actually certified against this integration standard. But it's not just that, what we've actually done is take that open standard, and we've augmented that with the power of Blackboard's premium APIs that we have to really support the best possible end user experience for instructors and students. And we're actually working really closely with some of these key providers in the space, uh, obviously as part of the core development workflow here, to really support alignment and consistency with, with our clients and, and obviously understanding that workflow. So really do look out for more information on this as, as it comes out in the coming weeks, but really excited about, <coughs> excuse me, about delivering this capability to our clients as well. Dropping highest and lowest marks in the category. So dropping a sort of a mark for students is really sort of an efficiency saving model for academics. So by allowing the lowest score to be removed from a particular mark, the academic can indicate that there will there'll be no essentially no makeup exam or retesting that essentially saves precious time. So with that, again, I want to jump into a quick demonstration just to show some of the workflows around this capability. So let me go ahead and share my screen briefly. And I will show you the workflow in the grade center. So let's make sure this here we go, hopefully it's uh, sharing now, perfect. Okay, so I'm inside the grade book on this ultra course, I'm gonna click overall grade. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do on this one is actually click on calculation details. And from here, I'm actually gonna select, obviously as part of this workflow, it's actually based on category weights. So obviously one of the things here is that, you know, we have the capability to support the kind of the dropping of the, of the, or the sort of, of, the, of the highest or the lowest score. So in this instance, I'm gonna look at this particular assignment because it has five items associated with it. You'll notice as I've changed the grade category weights, we now have this calculation rule. So if I select add rule, you'll notice that we have this peak panel that's displayed and actually I want to go ahead and enable that workflow. So for this particular assignment, I'm actually gonna drop the first or the lowest score, partly because you know, in this instance, there was a particular assessment that every single student struggled on, so we kind of want to do that one as well. 
And actually, on this instance, I'm actually going to drop the highest score because the, the kind of some, some nefarious things that were taking place and people overscored. So actually, what I want to go ahead and just drop both the lowest and the highest scores. If I click continue, you'll actually notice that those two scores there have actually been dropped. And the way this works is it essentially works on sort of N minus one. So in this instance, because there are five items, I can essentially drop the top four or drop four items from the overall list. Uh, and if I choose to drop the fifth one, what Learn's actually going to tell me is essentially you're removing everything from that category. Does it make sense for you just to kind of remove that overall calculation from the, from the overall grade? So there's much more flexibility in that workflow. And again, something that we had direct feedback from our customers on. And again, really supportive um, uh, to be able to kind of bring that to, uh, to our customers. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and share my uh, presentation again and jump back into the roadmap. Uh, here we go. Uh, next up is Microsoft Teams. Now, this one is uh, super, uh, super, you know, important, and, and again, really, uh, really pleased to kind of have a conversation and talk about this one as part of our roadmap. So. Blackboard support for Microsoft Teams has evolved, you know, pretty considerably since the early stages of 2020. You know, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, there was a significant shift to online remote learning. And Blackboard and Microsoft quickly partnered together to create that existing Microsoft Teams meeting scheduler LTI app. Now in 2021, Microsoft and Blackboard are partnering again together to integrate a much more fully featured access to Microsoft Class Teams for Education LTI app. Uh, this will be available for the Ultra Course view. Uh, and this, what this integration provides will be the benefits of core data exchange between Blackboard Learn Ultra and Microsoft Active Directory, the LTI open standard, and also the power of Blackboard's premium API frameworks, making it simple for educators and team uh, to use Teams within Blackboard Learn Ultra courses because the rosters are going to be synced between the two. And this will be an academic or instructor creation workflow as part of that. As part of this ongoing development, which is in progress now, we're actually launching a technical preview program in the next couple of weeks uh, with a select set of customers, a number of you on the call that have already signed up for this as well. This early access pilot will help to inform continued development and future enhancements as we look to deepen integration over time. We are targeting a general availability of this integration in the third quarter of this year, uh, and hopefully just in time for our back to school time frame for many institutions in the Northern Hemisphere. So really looking forward to, to launching this one and uh, excited to kind of see how this goes to, uh, to our client base. Next up, you saw earlier on my demonstration, a, a small but mighty improvement around base navigation indication on the, on, uh, on, uh, sorry, unread message indication on the base navigation. Um, this capability does allow a clearly identifying capabilities for all users, uh, and that's kind of essentially any new messages that they receive for both original and the ultra course view. And again, heavily requested from the community, so super excited about delivering this to, to our clients. Now, a major enhancement for our Middle Eastern client base, which uh, introducing full right to left capability in Learn Ultra. So this has been an active development for some time, and we're super excited about being able to deliver this for our Arabic and Hebrew speaking markets. This uh, capability will include full right to left flipped interface, including ultra base navigation, ultra course view, and the uh, sort of the administration panel includes enhancements to the ultra rich text editor. So for those uh, users that uh, write in right to left, they want to adjust the text direction display in the rich text editor, you have that capability as well. And we do provide system level Arabic and Hebrew language support. And this will also support course view language enforcement as well. So super excited about delivering this to our Middle Eastern clients. Rubrics feedback by criterion. So grading with rubrics supports instructional um, transparency and allows students to really clearly see what is being graded and when they're completing an assessment. You know, we continue to lean pretty heavily into the improvements in our rubric tool. Uh, alongside the work we've done to make the rubric tool easy to access in the grading workflow, which I showed you earlier, We'll also be working to deepen the functionality of the tool. One of these things that's coming in June will be rubrics having the ability to have feedback by criterion. So it will allow academics to dynamically give feedback per individual criterion, as opposed to kind of giving a single summative based feedback element at the end of the rubric. So again, real key enhancement here and heavily requested from our community. 
Next up, audio video feedback. So uh, we've, for some time, we've actually had the capability of audio and video feedback for students directly inside the grading workflow. And we know how powerful it is to give personalized level feedback directly to students. Given the past year of instruction has essentially been all online, what we want to do is actually provide a much more deeper level of personalization for, for students and also academics as well. So with the June release, we're actually gonna be including audio video functionality directly inside announcements and also that new qualitative peer review process that I showed you earlier. We are going to be continuing to monitor the usage of these tools as we roll these out and look to extend that across uh, different areas of the Ultra Course Room as well, but excited about delivering this in our June release. Next up, uh, enhanced filtering options in the Grade Center. So early adopters uh, of Ultra have really been looking for better ways to customize the Ultra Grade Book and sort of really wanting to, to kind of be able to kind of filter engagements. And we really have been listening to that. So with the July release that's coming, you will be allowed to apply filters to your grade book. So first of all, we're going to be adding the ability to filter your grade book by groups. Uh, and that's a pretty exciting update, but it's not the only thing that we're going to be doing. We're also going to be out applying multiple filters at once. So you'll no longer have to just know what filters are being available to you. This will work by selecting a new side panel will show all the available options. And essentially, you can select multiple filters to your gradebook at any one time. So this change in experience will allow us to create even more filter options a lot faster and will give you so much more control in terms of uh, sort of visibility as, in, as academics um, directly inside the grade center. At the point of delivery in the first version, we won't have the option to directly save that, but what you will have is the ability to kind of bookmark that in your browser. Um, so those filters will stay applied if you choose that particular method. Now, rich text editor updates. I showed you earlier some of the improvements that we've done. This is around the ability to improve, and we're working on this now around uh, tables. So it's as we sort of really focus on the ability for tables, one of the key workflows was the opportunity to allow uh, tables to be created across all form factors. That was critical. So creating a table on a tablet or a smartphone just basically just got as easy as, is as to create that on a desktop environment. Academics will be able to add text alongside the use of images using all the various controls that you have inside the rich text editor. And controls will be straightforward and intuitive to use once the table has been established in order to maximize creation and maintenance of the table, regardless of the form factor that you're going to be delivering this on. Next up. Uh, Badger credentialing and micro interact micro credentialing. So Blackboard's super excited to announce a deeper partnership with Concentric Sky, who are the makers of Badger credentialing solution. We've actually been working with the Badger team now for a significant period of time to really look at how we can support the ideas of digital credentials in Blackboard Learn, how we can allow an academics to award badges and issues to badges to, to students based on key triggers with inside the, the, the virtual learning environment. So with this initial integration, we're going to be supporting Badger Spaces. Uh, which will be available for all Learn um, SAS deployments, including uh, allowing academics or issuers to create and award badges. There will be support as well for Badger Pro, allowing in-depth capabilities such as institutional management of learner pathways, learner record support, the ideas of um, leader, leaderboard capabilities. Um, and also with this integration, uh, the Badger team have actually created a brand new Blackboard assignment objective, which allows uh, sort of uh, academics, learners to complete LMS objectives, essentially aligned to Blackboard linked assignments. So again, really powerful, really excited about delivering this capability directly into the platform. And then finally, touching on the, uh, the last actions around the, the improvements on one to three months. So the last section is going to be focusing on mobile experiences. So we continue to align our mobile solutions around our web responsive versions of Learn Ultra. As you can see, we're optimizing things like discussion board flow, making it easier to access collaborate recordings, uh, and also supporting things like um, giving much more clear indication in the app when a collaborate session is in progress. Uh, we're also finalizing the full release of journals in the app as well. I know there'll be a number of people on the call today that are super excited about having that workflow. Okay, so moving into the three to six month time frame improvements. 
So first of all, a brand new course overview. So Blackboard's in active development on a brand new course overview and landing page for Ultra, essentially being a total over, uh, evolution of the existing inter interface that we have today. Heavily prioritized and significant uh, based feedback from academic stu um, sort of students and also part of our long-term Ultra vision. So what this capability is going to be allowing to do is access direct information for end users and it will be tailored depending on you know, your role in the course. So you'll have key information if you are an academic or if you're a student. So uh, this obviously work is going to be phasing over time. The first phase will include a new banner option for academics that will provide a visual evidence to students that they landed in the right place. Again, super important for those students who perhaps don't have the, the recommended or so have limited skills in terms of online engagement. Um, also actively working with a number of clients regarding later milestones, particularly around analytical options that will be available for academics to review engagement as well. Highly recommend that you have a look at community.blackboard.com for kind of any research participation around this as well. And on a similar topic, uh, another project in active development and I'm super excited about is progress tracking. So we're currently targeting again uh, the third quarter of 2021 um, around the first phase of this delivery. So this would include the ability for uh, academics, teachers to turn on or off progress tracking for students and give students the opportunity to mark activities as both complete either manually or based on automated workflows such as completions of an assessment. Phase two will also um, support the delivery of analytical visualizations of student progress in academics. And when we think about progress tracking, I like to kind of align this to sort of things like modern day game theory. Something like progress tracking allows students to feel elements of success and you know, slight competition workflows around their, you know, their, their, their peers and really allows them to understand how they're progressing through content inside the course. So with this capability, super excited about being able to deliver this inside Ultra. Next up, improvements for um, sort of change management for institutions. So being on SAS, we know that you know, we can really provide the, you know, the, the capabilities of supporting the latest and greatest versions of the product. That's just one of the key benefits of, and, and powers of SAS. However, we understand that there are key times during the year that it's just never ideal to release a larger feature. And we've seen this and we've had feedback over the last, sort of, over the last number of months. With this, we've ad needed to adapt our processes so the institutions can have essentially more control over these larger changes that come out, and again, aligned to how you as institutions manage your change um, uh, accordingly. So what will have this capability around feature flagging? So administrators will have the ability to review and turn on certain features over a period of time. These will allow essentially administrators to turn them on site-wide for every individual user. Uh, features will eventually default to on, but the ability provides administrators with the flexibility to review and prepare to turn on features at a more convenient time for yourself. So again, really that workflow around your change management. These new configuration settings will be available in the admin panel later this year. Uh, it's important to note that we'll, for, we won't be doing this for every single feature and also the timelines to move forward with a feature depending on feature flagging will obviously vary on the complexity of that overall workflow, but obviously really excited about working on this to support the change management for your institutions. Earlier we saw some examples of projects to improve inclusiveness in Blackboard Learn Original uh, and obviously some of the improvements we've do doing in Ultra as well. So here are a couple of other projects that we're working on. Uh, we've spent a significant amount of time researching the concepts of pronouns, name pronuncia uh, pronunciation and preferred names as well. Uh, significant amount of research engagement with students and academics. We've done surveys uh, and obviously we've, we need to kind of strike a right balance between institutional data processes, user control and transparency. So first pronouns and name pronunciation. Students determine their preferred pronouns in the system, it tends to be via the SIS. Students can also set a preferred pronoun, a pronunciation inside the solution as well and display to classmates and their academics in key interaction points. One of the things we're going to be doing later on is allowing students to give choice between displaying their name and additional names as well. So instructors can either see both or they can actually have that overall control. So again, some significant improvements around inclusiveness inside the solution. Next up, points-based rubrics and continuation of the work in the rubric space. Um, this capability will deliver points and points-based range rubrics supporting a wider number of rows and columns within the interface. Highly requested feature from the community and super excited about delivering this. 
And finally, some of the great things that you've seen today, we just don't have enough time to talk about all of them. So very quickly, giving students submission receipts when papers have been submitted, improving rich text editor by adding code blocks and emojis, and working on more things around micro reactions to improve that level of interaction and engagement. And we're going to be talking more about this as we get closer to BB World. And again, we aren't done on that area as well. So milestone two of submission receipts will allow instructor reporting as well. Uh, we're also working on Blackboard data at the moment to essentially allow uh, the information being received from Ultra is a much more efficient and aligning around that improvement workflow. Uh, some smaller in, 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 uh, larger improvements. Uh, some students don't use the overall grade uh, inside Ultra, so we're going to be making the workflow simple to hide that capability. Similarly, some instructors don't use a letter grade and prefer to use a particular percentage. And um, we are adding that option in. And choosing absent is as points um, has kind of proved to be a little more challenging to display, but we will be adding that directly in the future as well. Now, moving on to longer term highlights. And again, these are sort of slightly longer out than our six month time frame. Uh, so we're talking a little bit more kind of thematically about items we're going to be working on, but let's start with notifications. So, you know, we live in a history where communication is easier than ever, uh, but it does come with challenges. And while it's pretty easy to communicate, it's become ever more challenging to communicate effectively. You know, personally, I was, I was never a fan of email when email was initially released. And I always felt that basically I could just pick up the phone and kind of call somebody. I thought it was a lot easier. However, email kind of came the sort of the, the ubiquitous way for me to kind of integrate and obviously communicate with people. That's just simply not the case anymore. Some people prefer text messages. Some people like push notifications that gives them that immediacy around actioning something. Um, beyond that, there's communication processes through things like social media, which even my children are better at than I am. So, you know, with all of these various avenues, it's challenging to essentially know what is the best way to communicate with students. So you can be really confident that they can engage and crucially have seen the communication that you've delivered to them. So with that, we're taking a pretty hard look at all of our communication options to effectively create a system that will ensure academics that their message, their announcement, their interactions are a best possible chance to get in front of their students and vice versa. We are continuing to uh, directly focus on it and continued investment in critical and grading assessments. You know, you can currently assign parallel markers, essentially initial use case for delegated grading. We are going to be working on a distributed marking responsibility to different graders by group memberships, making it easier to assign to things like tutorial groups. We also understand that test security is super important. So we're looking at multiple ways to improve that framework. So we're going to be starting with questions one at a time, displaying that as well as marking for academics. And we're going to be continuing to lean into that work as we go into the second half of this year. And we spoke earlier about some of the core value streams that we spoke about for Learn Ultra. And um, supporting best in class is, is kind of a key focus for us when we think about the Google and Microsoft and the cloud providers. Now we continue to strengthen and deepen the workflows as Microsoft, and we are looking at other workflows around deepening the M365 solution inside Learn Ultra with continued uh, areas of exploration and, and, uh, and engagement. We're going to be looking at things like my, Microsoft's latest meeting app to enable invite schedule and accessing Teams inside Ultra expanding the capabilities of file discovery, file linking, document collaboration with Microsoft's OneDrive LTI app, and exploring additional synergies with Blackboard Ally and Immersive Reader. But one of the critical things is as we're building these integrations out, we're going to be supporting extensibility, not just for Microsoft, but also a whole range of cloud providers. For, for example, things like Google and Google's toolset. And this is really interesting because of the way that we're actually architecting the data exchange between Learn and both these solutions will really support that kind of key workflow. I'm showing multiple examples today where we're investing resources into deepening functionality in our existing product. You know, this is critical to kind of the long term success of Ultra, and we are continuing to invest in this particular area. Crucially, we take client feedback very seriously, and hopefully you've kind of seen that with some of the things that we're doing in terms of our change management. So look, looking for changes to how learning modules, for example, function, we've had a lot of feedback around that. Improvements to drag and drop experience, as well as more granular options for accommodations. All of these things are as part of our second half of the year kind of review and the plan that we have. These are just some of the workflows that we are looking to, uh, to push forward in in the second half. So with that, um, I'm going to hand back over to my colleague, Nico, um, to close us out today. Thanks ever so much, buddy. All right. So um, 
for the second year in a row, we're hosting the Teaching and Learning Conference in Europe. So we would like to invite you to join us in this interactive online session. We will bring some best practices in, in, in innovation, roundtable discussions, analytics workshops, professional development, and much more. The other announcement that we had for you is BB World, Blackboard, Blackboard World is just around the corner. So keep an eye open for more information about this event, a virtual event in July as well. And some final information around the advisory group that well, Dom was mentioning, how we would like you to be involved in this process. Um, so join the community site, please. Uh, there's a lot of interesting information for you guys there. There's a learn section inside with a lot of updates. Uh, also, there's some user groups like the learn office hours, which, which by the way, is on uh, its fourth year anniversary this year. So congrats to them. And uh, that's all we had for you today. Thanks so much for joining. And until next time, see you soon. Bye-bye.